Hello, AP Chemists. Just uh, working through a little bit of return to the YouTube channel so that I can uh, work a few of these back into the mix, given that I'm out for a day or two here following surgery. So I wanted to recreate Titration Tuesday, which is really uh, a little bit more than just titration. So a little discussion of acids and bases, uh, of mixtures of acids and bases, which we'll call buffers, and then reacting acids with bases, which we'll call titrations. So let's first just talk briefly about weak acids and bases by themselves. Probably the governing uh, behavior for this would be something that we could certainly dig into uh, by looking at our formula sheet. So what we'd be looking at would be the version of Ka being H plus times A minus all over HA, or if it's a weak base, that Kb equals HB plus times OH minus all over B. So those would be kind of our two governing uh, equations. And honestly, those are really useful for mixtures of conjugates and to some degree, even if we get into titrations uh, as well. So very useful formulas. Um, when we're looking at uh, weak acid or base by itself, usually we're given some combination of the starting molarity of the acid or base. So that would be one of these two things. That's our initial molarity. And then you're sometimes given the initial K value. This is our equilibrium constant. And if those are the two things you're given, then you can solve for the uh, molarity of H plus or the conjugate because those two will be our X. If we sort of follow a Reiserbach system, you would get that Ka equals X squared or the molarity minus X, where we know that the minus X part doesn't really matter or that KB equals those same things. Uh, just remember that X represents OH minus here and X represents, uh, oops, uh, X represents not A minus, well it does, but it represents H plus uh, right there. So uh, they also, of course, will mix and match those things. Sometimes they'll give you the pH and you may need to find the H plus from there or OH minus from there, and then that'll give you one of those. So that'll give you the X value instead of the K or the M value, and you have to work around it. So just be ready to kind of play around with that stuff um, a little bit. So let me talk then a little bit about what happens if you have not just a weak acid or base by itself, but a weak acid or base uh, along with its conjugate. And maybe it would be helpful to make sure you understand what a conjugate is. Right, so conjugates are really chemicals uh, that are related by the exchange of H+. That would be the Brinstead-Lowry way of kind of thinking about it. So the acid is the thing that donates H+, the base is the thing that uh, receives H+. So you could certainly have HF and F minus. They're related by the exchange of H plus because HF is donating H plus and F minus is certainly capable of receiving it. You could have something like NH3 and NH4 plus. And NH3 uh, receives H plus and NH4 plus donates. And all you have to be able to do is look at whether they're giving or receiving uh, the H plus fare, whether it's an acid or a base. So NH3 might, given that it has H in it, might initially appear to be an acid, but it is not an acid. It is receiving the H and is therefore the base. You also have some things that are amphiprotic that can do both. So if you have something like HSO3 one minus, HSO3 minus can either receive an H plus and turn into a sulfurous acid, or it can donate an H plus and turn into the sulfate polyatomic ion. Uh, and so depending on the conditions in which it's put, HSO3 minus can act either as one or the other. That would be the bisulfate ion. So it can act either way. But any mixture of these two things is what we call a conjugate pair. And a conjugate pair is important for all sorts of reasons. One, because the AP expects simply that you'll be able to identify one as an acid, one as a base, B, that you can identify them as conjugates of one another, C, that there's this really important relationship that KW equals KA times KB for pairs that are related by this relationship or Kw, at least at 25 Celsius, is always that 1 times 10 to the negative 14th value. So we get this inverse relationship that if the weak acid is stronger, its conjugate base is weaker, and vice versa. So that's certainly something to keep in mind. 
And then lastly, letter D, honestly, is that you get uh, a mixture of conjugates that we call a buffer. So if I have two conjugates put together, that's what we call a buffer. And we've talked about those a little bit here and there. The whole idea is that they're there to prevent changes in pH. So if you have HF and F minus, if you add H plus, or if you add OH minus, if you add H plus, it's the conjugate base that reacts with it and turns into HF. We've replaced this really powerful acid in H plus and turned it into a weak one, HF. Or if you add the, uh, excuse me, if we add the uh, very powerful OH minus, the really strong base, then we get the addition of HF to sort of react with it. That turns into water, which we're not super concerned about, and F minus. So again, instead of this really strong base, we have a much weaker conjugate base. The same thing would work if we chose a weak base-centered mixture like NH3 and NH4 plus, if you added H plus, or if you added OH minus, if you add H plus to it, uh, it would be the NH3 that reacts. If you added H OH minus, it's the NH4 plus that reacts. And in both cases, again, you're turning it into the conjugate of what you initially had. So if we have uh, this strong acid, we turn it into a conjugate one. If we have this really strong base, we turn it into a weak one. So same idea there, limiting these changes in pH. And you can solve for pH of any mixture of those, either using the Henderson-Hasselbach equation, which we've talked about, or if you go back to that original Ka or Kb expression, you've got your molarity of, well, I wrote it as HF. It's gonna affect my YouTube numbers for sure. Uh, HA, you've got your two molarities there. So I would have the molarity of F minus, which would be A minus in this case, or HF, which would be HA in this case. And whatever those molarities are, you can simply plug them in. And if you either know the pH or the Ka, you can find whichever one you don't know. So they might ask you, what is the pH of a mixture of certain molarity HF and a certain molarity of F minus? And you just plug those two in and you either will know the Ka value of HF or you'll know what pH it results in, in which case you still just have the one missing variable. All right, now we get to the good stuff that everyone I'm sure is interested in, thus the uh, name, the alliteration name for today, Titration Tuesday. This is a standard titration curve of a strong acid plus a weak base. I mean, excuse me, a weak acid plus a strong base. We've got this idea of strong base right here. We're adding OH minus to it. This is what we call our titrant. This is our analyte, which is kind of the solution that we're analyzing what's left over after we've mixed it some weak acid, HA in this case. So some key things about this that you should know, we've gone over this several times. This is a weak acid by itself. So this is just a point A. This is just HA all by itself, just to use the usual Ka expression for that. And then at every point between point A and the equivalence point, which we're gonna call point C, at every point between there, there's more of our weak acid than there is of the strong base. That's important to keep in mind. When we're halfway there, so at 25, and I figured out that it was 25 because the equivalence point is clearly demarcated at 50. So when we're halfway there, that is the half equivalence point. And the half equivalence point, when you've done that, you've gotten rid of half of your HA. It has turned into A minus as per the buffer situation on the previous page. And so at that point, then the HA that's left, which is half of what it was, is equal to the A minus because that's where the original half went. And because they're equal, that means that pKa equals pH. And that's because the Ka was equal to the H plus in that formula because the a, a HA and A minus uh, divide out. So they're all that's left. So that's a very important thing. College Board, a big fan of that. Everywhere between A and B, the amount of HA is greater than the amount of A minus. Everywhere from B on up, the amount of A minus is greater than HA. And then at uh, point C, that's the equivalence point. That's where we've got equal amounts of our uh, HA and our strong base. So HA equals OH minus, which means they're actually both at zero. They're gone. So you essentially have all A minus at this point, which is why the pH is above seven. 
and pH is above 7 because this is a conjugate base. And that conjugate base floating around in water without really much anything else in there is going to push the pH above 7. Um, if you kind of go back to point B, just something to throw in there, this area around point B and point B specifically, this is sort of optimal buffer activity. Uh, anything where you have pretty much equal amounts or exactly equal amounts of HA and A minus is called an optimal buffer because the solution can react equally to additions of acid or of base because your amounts of HA and A minus are comparable so that it's not especially good at just reacting to acids or just acting uh, in response to bases. It can react with either one. All right, and uh, I think that's enough for that. We've talked about that several times. I don't need to sing uh, Beyond the Sea for you, so we'll leave that alone. And then this is a graph uh, simply of the uh, weak base with a strong acid. So in this case, this would be a strong acid that's being added. And that strong acid, again, is our titrant. The weak base would be our analyte. That's what's being reacted with. It starts, again, somewhere in that basic realm. It drops steadily as you go. In this case, the half equivalence point would be here at 12.5. Um, that would be pKb equaling pOH, uh, which would be a number in this case, I don't know, probably around 5. And that would be then that the pH would be about uh, 9 at that point, which certainly makes sense. So uh, everything kind of applies just in reverse. So initially here at this point, it's you know pretty much all of our weak base, just all of B by itself. And again, you could use that Kb equals... Hb plus times OH minus all over B to figure out problems with that. Everywhere kind of in between, the amount of B uh, is going to be greater than the amount of uh, H plus from uh, point A to point B. Everywhere that you've got between there, the amount of B is greater than the amount of Hb plus, but everywhere from here onward, the amount of Hb plus is greater than the amount of B. Uh, again, the conjugate predominates after that half equivalence point. It's an important thing to think about. Um, if you have a mixture of the two, you can use that same formula, come back. If you've got HB plus and B in there, figure out that ratio and see how that relates to KB and OH minus. Again, with the idea if they're exactly equal, you get back to that half equivalence point. Um, the College Board hasn't asked about this a lot lately, but on both graphs, whether it's this one or the one on the previous slide, you, you do want to think about what indicator you could choose to show the results of this. And you simply want an indicator that changes its pH kind of in that steep part of the curve. So in this case, anywhere from a pH of from about 3 or 4 to about 6 or 7. If it changes around there, you know that you, you are really close to the equivalence point because it doesn't take very much volume of your titrant to cause a gigantic change in pH. So if it's a pH of 4, which would be right here, or a pH of 6, which is right here, that's an almost negligible difference in volume on our x-axis there. So it doesn't really matter that you get the one that it should be. The same is true uh, on the previous slide. It all sort of looks the same. So, All right, uh, just a quick Titration Tuesday recap. I will try to get this uploaded and linked to you. Uh, and I sent you all the files and all that other good stuff. So enjoy that. And uh, we'll see you in person soon. Have a great day.